In this video, I'm going to show you the most dominant passing play in Madden 21 right now. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become better Madden players, both offensively and defensively. Every day on YouTube, we release new tips and tricks um, to teach the game, basically help you understand things that competitive players are doing, things that I'm learning online and in tournaments and things like that. And so if you want to um, if you want to stay most up to date with the channel, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. It's completely free and again it just allows you to know whenever we release new material. All right guys, so the best passing play right now in Madden 21 is by far and away PA boot over. Now, you've probably faced this at some point online, but I want to share with you and really break down why this play is so good. And I want to talk about the idea of simplicity in your offense. And what I mean by that is simply um, having a simplified game plan where you're only running maybe three to five plays, but every play looks exactly the same and they go in different directions. And so I'm going to give you kind of a little bit of a bunch tight end mini scheme in this video. Um, if you want to get my full gun bunch tight end offensive ebook, it's available for just 15 bucks in the description. It's probably my favorite offense so far this season i've recently been um, combining it a little bit with the bunch and the trips tight end offset out of the jets playbook i have a whole ebook on that as well um, if you want to get all three of those they're in the description but if you just want to get the bunch tight end it's just 15 bucks and again it's down in the description but anyways um, we're gonna so the audibles we're gonna set um, for this scheme is we're going to have inside zone we're going to have mesh and then we're going to have inside switch and tight end corner now we're going to come out and pa boot over every single play okay literally every single play we're going to be coming out in pa boot over and the way this is going to work practically is we are going to first and foremost break this down so the adjustments for pa boot over is actually relatively simple all we're going to do is we're going to put the tight end or the x receiver on a delay fade and then we're going to um basically we're going to double team the furthest person that can blitz on the right side and we're going to id the corner on the right side so you see this is how your pass protection is going to look and then the last little step to this is i like to smart route the square receiver you don't have to do that but i personally think it does help a little bit and then from there all i'm going to do is i'm going to motion snap that square guy just a little bit to the right and the idea here is we're just going to roll out and we're going to make reads most of the time you're going to be hitting your drag or your crossing route or your delay fade. So for example here, I've got five, my hook curls are set to five yards. So, or I'm sorry, the um, the curl flats are set to five yards. So in theory, the curl flats should play the drag route uh, to the circle receiver you'll see here. He's gonna play that. And then as you can see here though, on the outside, I have a chance to hit Devontae Adams. Now, the outside quarter zone is the best chance that the defense has at being able to consistently play it because they don't get as glitched out um, as they would otherwise. One thing that you can do to kind of combat that is you, there's some motion snapping techniques you can use that will combat that. But anyways, for right now, I just want to stick with the same motion. So again, we're going to motion out. And as you can see on the sideline, we're able to basically pass lead open that little drag route to the circle receiver. Now, the first adjustment that they're going to try to make is they're going to go into a cover three defense and they're going to play basically Mabel coverage. So you can see this is the cover three defense. I want you to notice how the cover three is a lot different than the cover four. So you'll see right here, whenever I run cover three, that crossing route to the triangle receiver should be wide open on the sideline. And we'll just take the drag right there. But the crossing route should be wide open. That crossing route gets open. Um, all the way back they basically have to set their zone drops to 30 yards um, for them to be able to, to properly defend the crossing route it's one of the best features of this passing play and it's what makes this passing play so good you know offenses are built around one to two dominant routes such as a crossing route a post route something like that um, but as you'll see right here this is what i'm talking about you see that crossing route right on the sideline very easy dot for someone like aaron Rodgers. now um, you might be saying, well, what if they run, you know, what if they run Tampa 2 on you? What would you do in that situation? Well, again, you're just going to make your reads, right? You're just going to make your reads. But as you roll out, the other thing that you have going for you is you can release your delay fade. And as you see, it's one of the best reads in the game because the, the, the flooding concepts of the drag, the crosser, and the post 
are going to pull all of the zones out of the out of the uh, field of play. And so they're not going to be able to make very good adjustments onto this. Another thing that you can do is against man coverage, you see that the man coverage will completely glitch out and you're able to hit the tight end as well. So this is all kind of the starting point, the building blocks of a dominant offensive scheme. Now I want to share with you a couple of things that they can do from an adjustments perspective. So one of the things that they could do um, from an adjustments perspective is they could basically take, essentially take their cover three and play it like an outside quarters. Then I want to show you what that looks like. So I've got outside quarters here. And then I've also got my, I, you know, all everything same. It's just cover three Mabel with outside quarter zones. And I want you to watch. You see that the open, the middle of the field is still open for that delay fade. But as you can see, it does do a good job of handling the crossing route. Um, there's no room to throw the crossing route. So an outside quarter to the right is something that does a really good job against a crossing route. Okay, so that's something to know. So that now, okay, we could have a plus one advantage. So now maybe they're going to use the tight end with this guy right here, right? And, you know, maybe they're going to play a defense, you know, somewhat like this. So now this is where we talk about the punch counter punch of this. So when you start to realize that you can, again, it's all about using the same motion. So it looks exactly the same. But if you look at this, now I'm rolling out. If you look, I can low ball this post route right over the middle, as you see right there. If there's not a deep middle zone, I have a really good opportunity to hit that. So what that means is they're going to have to use her. They're really going to have to use her on this play, someone like this guy right here. Okay, they're going to have to use her this guy. And what's going to happen is your. This is where again it just comes back to understanding your concept and understanding how it works. So let's say that they're running that cover four. You're coming out here like this. You're rolling out, and you see that you can basically. You see that I can basically playmaker up the circle receiver if there's not a cloud flat over there. So if they're not made, even if they are Mabel coveraging, you can do this, but I can playmaker that drag route. Uh, I can playmaker that drag route up and let me, let me come back out and grab, uh, grab that same coverage. But this is the beauty of understanding your play. You can really do this against everything. You know, if you have a good receiver running that crossing route, that's one of the key elements to this offense. And, and I, I'm telling you, this this is an offense I think people have flirted with a lot, but not very many people have committed to this offense. A couple have, um, and I think they've had a lot of success, but not very many people have committed to running this. Like they, they'll go to it in a quick snap type thing. They don't really understand, you know, what is the deeper thing about this? What are the real adjustments that someone has to make to stop this? And there's a lot of adjustments that people have to make. You see here, I can playmaker that up, and I can throw that to circle. Let me show you that one more time, so that I can, can I, so that you can actually see the route. And I don't even need to do any other adjustments or anything. I just want to show you the circle route. So when I come out here like this, if he's underneath, I can just playmaker him up. Look at that right there, right in front of that deep blue, and that's a 20 yard, 20 to 30 yard dot. Um, let me show you another example. So let's say that they're going to that cover three style defense that we were talking about where they're gonna put the, the outside quarter on that left side, which I think is not a bad idea. Um, there's some things we can do to manipulate that if we notice that that's what they're doing a lot. But anyways, you'll see right here. So again, I'm gonna get out of the pocket. And if you just watch, I can just play maker him up right on the sideline. And you see, I have a nice clean laser to throw. That's the beauty of this offense. So now that I've kind of forced a lot of adjustments, there's things they're having to do to stop this. Now I can begin to work off and do different things. So for example, um, what we know is that we're gonna probably see something uh, of this variety right here, you know, kind of a double Mabel type of coverage, you know, maybe they're usering something like that right there. And this is where we could go to a play like the play, um, if I can find it here, we can go to the play inside switch and we're gonna smart route the square receiver. We're going to streak the triangle receiver and then we're going to, you see here, we're just gonna leverage this right here. And we're gonna have the same exact motion, except the only difference is now, look how open that middle of the field has become. And that little post route's gonna come right underneath it. You know, let's say that they're in a situation where maybe they're, maybe they're running, um, you know, that cover three defense that we were talking about before where they're putting two quarters on the field. If they're putting two quarters on the field against something like this, um, is not exactly a great strategy. So I'll show you here, uh, if I can find an inside switch, and we're just going to smart route the corner route, uh, smart route the square receiver, and then we're just gonna kind of leverage this right here. And what you'll notice is that quarter zone, you see how open that middle of the field is now? Now again, you might say, well, they're gonna use her that. Well, yeah, they might, 
but I could do other things as well. I could put a, a hitch rod out there if I wanted to. I could. There's a lot of things that I could do, right? Um, tight end corner is another example. So let's say they're still doing that quarter uh, defense where they basically are hot routing a quarter zone onto the field um, to try to take away some of that stuff. Tight end corner is a good example of something like this. So what I can do is I could smart route the circle receiver. I could streak the tight end, and then I could take the running back and maybe put him on an in route, a little underneath route or whatever. But what you're going to notice here is that the circle receiver, um, you're going to have a lot of space to be able to hit that circle receiver or that tight end streak. All three plays look exactly identical. They're just going in different directions. You know, if you're getting a lot of zone drop type of coverage, more Mabel style, um, you know, something like this, another good play, another good concept to go to would be the mesh concept where we're going to basically do double streaks in the seams, as you can see right here. And then the running back is just going to kind of come underneath, you know, and do something. If we could put him on an angle route, that's what I would do, but we can't put him on that here. But you'll see that the square player, it's wide open on the sideline, as you can see. So my point is, part of simplifying your offense is saying, okay, what are the couple of adjustments that it's really going to take for them to stop this? And then how can I craft plays off of it that can really work well together? That's how you build an offensive scheme. And I don't think people really talk a lot about that. And I think I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that here on the channel. But you don't need a lot of plays. You just need the right plays and you need them to look exactly the same, in my personal opinion. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you want to learn my entire Gun Bunch tight end offensive scheme, uh, that guide is available in the description right now for just 15 bucks. You can learn the entire Bunch tight end offense. Um, probably my favorite offense that I've ran all season just because of the simplicity of it and the fact that it just, I mean, it just has some really powerful concepts. So I would encourage you to check that out. I think it's the perfect uh, mesh of the trips tight end and the bunch and the beauty of the Jets playbook is you can run this, you can run a uh, bunch and trips tight end offset. You have kind of all three of them uh, within one little sequence there. So thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, you can always text me. Uh, my number is at the top right. I'll leave it in the description as well. And just a quick reminder, if you want to get the full guide, it is available in the description.